Cyclone Mandus moves inland near Chennai on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 10th. Right now we still have just the one tropical storm active, Mandus, which is moving inland over India and will degenerate into a depression soon, although there's two other areas that we're monitoring closely, particularly near the Philippines, and we'll be taking you through that in just a moment. First of all though, the Atlantic Ocean is dead, which is great news. Last time we left it, there was still that chance of an, uh, a, a cyclone forming in the central Atlantic. That has now completely disappeared, so that's good news, no areas of interest. We're skipping the Eastern Pacific and going south instead now to the South Pacific, a 40% chance here near the Fiji Islands, an area of interest that will gradually move southwards and may not be fully tropical at first or later on even, uh, but a 40% chance with a lot of uncertainty about this one. Western Pacific has an 80% chance of development for a system that looks to be wrapping up nicely and probably going to become a tropical storm, a rather brief run at one off the coast of the Philippines for the next few days. We'll pick it up on the models in a few moments. Mostly we'll stay out to sea though. And Mandus is moving inland very close to Chennai, uh, is moving over uh, all of its convection is now inland uh, and its circulation made landfall not so long ago, just a few hours actually, and it will continue to weaken. So let's check the latest satellite imagery. This is what the Atlantic looks like today. And you can see that we've got not much going on. Dry air still extremely dominant over the Atlantic Ocean. And that is a pretty uh, common trend when we get late into the season, indeed in the off season, which now we are but a tail extending from a big extratropical cyclone out there in the northeast. Eastern Pacific, uh, you can see here, there's just a few little blobs of convection over Central America and really not too much going on at all. Uh, but next tropical cyclone looks like it's pushing into the uh, west coast of the United States, but really nothing of a tropical nature. Let's take a look at our focus points then right now. This is uh, Cyclone Mandus. You can see it here um, in the last, this is probably a 6 or 12 hour loop I think it is, uh, showing the course of this storm's landfall process and it was looking really poor earlier just as it was making landfall and it's blown up a big health, hefty sh shelf of convection in the last few hours there blowing up into the minus 80s for a time and that will probably be short lived and eventually it will die off properly. Now looking at the South Pacific, look at the bottom left hand corner and you can see plenty of cloud cover in that area around about Fiji and its eastern islands, particularly the smaller ones. And uh, that is trying to acquire some rotation as it starts to move a little bit southwestwards. Uh, fairly slow moving at first, but that's going to pick up speed in the next few days, um, especially if it develops. Watch out for that one. Western Pacific looks like this. You can see that big pile of thunderstorms from that what was a tropical wave. It's now more of a uh, disturbance and it's really getting close to tropical cyclone status with some uh, decent rotation around uh, one of those two inner bands. And uh, we're just waiting really for the storm to increase in intensity, only around 30 miles per hour at the moment, and for some more convection reliably over the center, if there indeed is a center yet. And the Indian Ocean looking like this, you can see Mandus moving off into there, a lot of moisture piling up even as far north as Kolkata to Bangladesh as well. In the southern Indian Ocean, not much going on right now, that may change later. And in the Australian region, things looking fairly quiet. A few thunderstorms in the northern reaches, uh, but generally it is pretty quiet there. And you can see the Fiji region there on the right-hand side. Once again, the infrared version of those uh, disturbances still continuing. Well, then let's check the sea surface temperatures and the eastern Pacific and central Pacific still there with those temperatures. East pack still over 28 degrees, but we know that there's extremely 
Uh, low chances of storm formation there. I think only two storms have ever formed in December, and they were a very long time ago. The the Atlantic still looking okay in the Caribbean Sea, but as we saw, dry air is absolutely demolishing any chances of new tropical cyclones. There's no wave train, there's really nothing at all at this time of year, so the Atlantic is pretty calm. North Indian Ocean, you'll see that Mandus there, it's weakening. It was mainly caused by wind shear, but sea surface temperatures won't have helped because they dropped a little bit when it made landfall only around 26 degrees. In the uh, Philippine area, it's still around 29 degrees where that tropical depression is, or soon to be, uh, depression, uh, which will head off slightly to the northeast and uh, then turn back on itself and get sheared away as well in about three or four days. And in the Australian region, just about peak into the Pacific down there as well, very warm sea surface temperatures where that other area of interest is around 30 degrees celsius and you'll see here on the anomaly chart that around fiji through um, new caledonia and towards vanuatu very high sst anomalies um, cool anomalies in the eastern pacific with the la nina elsewhere it's above average particularly near the philippines and in the gulf of mexico though that's not worth much looking at the oceanic heat content this is the uh, atlantic right now and you can see the caribbean is on the only really warm spot left it's really dying off now in the atlantic which is good news for all involved eastern pacific pretty much dead western pacific dying off slowly as well i think starting tomorrow we'll show you the southern hemisphere charts because we have those as well uh, lined up and ready so i think we'll look at those tomorrow into the computer models then, this is the short range, the most important part of the GFS cycle, day one to five, and you'll see there that tropical storm developing. Uh, it does take a little while for it to actually form, not straight away, and it only lasts for around a couple of days. Let's just watch again. When we watch that thing form there, it's round about here, and it's the 11th there that it ends up forming. So 24 hours still left before it actually develops, according to the GFS model, although that could change. It'll be stick It'll stall pretty much completely in that time. Mandus moving in through India there and off it goes towards the other side. Its remnants might still be traceable in the Arabian Sea. But right at the end of the five day period, another disturbance emerging off Indonesia. And there it is in those later phases getting to storm force winds. Not a circulation there at that point, but it may end up getting one. And it could be a 1-2 uh, December tropical cyclone uh, rampage if you want to be dramatic about it uh, that continues to go on there and in the southern hemisphere this is for the pacific system near fiji there it is developing and down it goes and really gets into another system there and it probably turns post-tropical or at least not fully tropical quite quickly although it's hard to tell on that imagery it may survive the whole duration other models aren't really keen on this happening um, the cmc i think it was actually develops favors the extra tropical system that this one sort of absorbs uh, so it's a difficult one to forecast that one uh, but it is 40%. Longer range, day 5 through 10, you'll see that Indian Ocean system, the northern side there, uh, developing and a lot scraggly and messier than um, Mandus was. Whether it reaches tropical storm status at all, I'm not sure. But check out that big giant down there in the uh, southern Indian Ocean, a big uh the first proper storm of the season you might want to say uh might get started there in the next 10 days that's day five through ten looks like an interaction with another system there as well which aids its size but it should remain out at sea that's all the serious stuff done at this point you can take a look at our merch store scan the barcode and you can find all of our usual items and you can probably still get them delivered in time for christmas and also are still waiting for Hone t-shirts. Of course, you can also fulfill full season and individual storm animation requests on the store as well. Well, in the silly range, we're also still looking down in that area, watching that cyclone. There might have been a little disturbance near Mozambique as well. It doesn't really get legs, uh, but that cyclone, uh, category three peak by the looks of it, and then it trails down towards the south southwest. Uh, interesting track actually for it to still be going southwest at that point and still maybe half a tropical cyclone left in it whether it's made an extra tropical transition or not by that point it's hard to tell again uh, but interesting track for that system and a fairly long lived one actually uh, persisting into Christmas day there with tropical storm force winds. 
In fact, it might remind you a little bit of this. On this day in 2012, it was Cyclone Claudia in a similar position, a Category 4 peak at 130 miles per hour as it continued in a generally southwesterly direction. I think it was actually turning south roundabout now and then it recurved southeast. Um, and that, of course, for those who know Force 13 lore, was the first storm I ever narrated for Force 13. Cyclone Claudia there. 10 years ago today. All right then, well, let's take a look at where we're at right now in 2022. The next name in the Atlantic, should we get any more storms, is Owen. In the Eastern Pacific, Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, we are still on the clutches waiting for Hone, and it's becoming very uh, dull and dismal that wait, isn't it? In the Western Pacific, Pakar is next, and that might be coming soon. And in the North Indian Ocean, we are now looking out for Mocha. We've so far seen 90 storms this year, which is just two off the annual average. I think we'll quite uh, comfortably get there. I know there's only 20 days to go, really, but we will get there. In the Australian region, Darien is next up, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.